today we're working on a, an aerobic treatment unit. This is a 500 gallon per day um, unit that you would see at a typical residence. And so I'm going to go over some of the, the things that we look for when we're doing our, our maintenance check. Usually I start at the cleanest end of the system. So that'll be usually the pump tank and then I'll work my way up or I guess kind of back upstream toward the dirtier tanks, the ones that have more solids in them. So one of the first things I want to do, I want to check the pump tank for any any solids just to make sure it's clear in here. Uh, sometimes we'll end up with solids in the pump tank. Uh, it could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe either the, the tank hasn't been pumped out in a long time or a lot of the times it's because there's a high water usage event, a high flow of water through in a short period of time that can carry the, the solids over. So this is our pump tank uh, and you can see in our sludge sampler here that there's it's clear and so this is what we want to see in our pump tank we don't want any solids occasionally you might get a couple inches toward the bottom of the tank uh, it's relatively normal but again what we want to see is just nice clear liquid in our pump tank so very minimal solids or no solids at all This is a, a sludge sampling device, this tool here. So it does have a little ball valve on the bottom that I'm able to control from a, a rod up at the top. And so this is what we use to see the, the profile of our tanks. The next component on this model we'll go to is the, the aeration component. And so uh, it's pretty difficult to, to access the aeration portion of the tank to see the suspended solids. So what we do is usually we just run the the sludge sampler down the middle of the clarifier and what that does is it allows us to see uh, get an idea of the solids or how much the depth of solids in the tank um, and so this is our, our suspended solids and what we'd like to see is ideally clear liquid maybe in the top foot and a half to two foot of the the aeration tank or of the I'm sorry of the clarifier and then we go down to the bottom and we can see uh, this nice healthy brown color so these are solids that are in the aeration portion of the tank and so you can see that that healthy brown color uh, this is what we'd like to see if it was a dark color or black then that's usually an indicator of anaerobic conditions and so that often points to an issue with the the air supply in the system and so again we've got toward the bottom of our clarifier uh, where it starts to open up into the aeration portion of the tank. Again, you can see the solids. But then as we move up in the clarifier toward the top, um, 18 inches to two feet, you can see this water is, is nice and clear. And also we have no scum layer present in the top of here. So overall um, healthy conditions in this aeration tank. And then lastly, we can also sample with this tool, uh, we can sample the, the trash tank. So this is the first component of the system. So this is what receives the water coming in from the house. So we have anaerobic conditions in the trash tank. Um, and so we can check this to look at the, the depth of solids in this tank. So you can see the, the contrast between this and what we saw in the aeration portion of the tank. So the black solids are an indicator of anaerobic conditions. And so what we look for in the trash tank is if there's any scum floating on the top, we want to add the depth of the scum plus the depth of the solids in the bottom. And if those two added together account for roughly a quarter to a third of the total depth of the tank, or the water column in the tank, then we'd like to go ahead and have the tank pumped out. Uh, but overall this looks fine there's no scum in, in this one here uh, and very little maybe six inches or so of solids in the bottom of the tank and then we just empty this tool back into the the tank and then i'll go ahead and, and rinse off the tool clean it off uh, before we do our another inspection
And then one of the other things that we look at uh, when we're working on the, the systems are that we want to check the aerator. Um, and so what I'll do is I will go ahead and, and turn the power off to this unit. This, on this one here, it does have a switch, a disconnect right here. So I can shut the power off to the aerator and go ahead and open this up and check the, the filter. And so the manufacturer will state in the manual how often you should check the filter. Uh, you can definitely check it more, you know, if you have dusty conditions around your home. Uh, but you can see this one here, we're gonna go ahead and pull it out, clean it off um, or replace it with a new one and then uh, and put everything back together. So you can just see uh, it's similar to an automotive air filter or something you would find on a lawnmower or a small engine or something like that, just a little foam filter. And so it just captures the grass seeds, dust, and stuff like that, prevents it from going into the, the aerator and potentially shorten the life of that, that aerator. So I'll go ahead and replace this one here in a little bit and, and put it back together. And then also one of the other things we like to do, uh, so this one does have a liquid coronation system it's on this particular model. <clears throat> You'll see uh, this reservoir underneath the lid, this clear plastic tank. And so this is filled with unscented household bleach. And so usually the we add bleach, maybe about a gallon a month. It really depends on your, your water usage. So we would unscrew this cap, <clears throat> top it off with the unscented household bleach, uh, again, as, as needed. And then what we do uh, to check the chlorine residual uh, to make sure that we are getting you know, disinfection in the tank. Uh, there's a variety of ways, but we want to catch a sample of this liquid. And then we'll use a chlorine test kit to test for chlorine. So